Okay, here we go. Hi everyone, this is Kevin again. Uh, today I'm going to show you a popular requested one uh, using a Barco Event Master system and an Apple computer. I'm going to force a custom resolution out of this computer. Right now I have a Apple M1 MacBook Pro connected into a Barco Image Pro 4K. Uh, I have this connected via USB uh, C to DisplayPort 1.2, and I am going to make it do a custom resolution. Uh, we'll pick a random number, uh, 5,240 by 1,000p, uh, just a pure arbitrary number. So the workflow is not too unique. There is one manual process that we're going to have to do, but I will show you that right now. So I have a Barco Image Pro 4K connected to my system right now. I have set it to matrix mode or matrix preview just because I personally like that. And I've deleted all the outputs and inputs. So of course my input connector is yellow indicating that it is um, receiving, receiving signal. But first thing I'm gonna do of course is set the connector capacity to 4K. Uh, my 5,000 whatever I said it was is by far a 4K input. So I'm going to now build this input connector. And I'm gonna call it MacBook Pro. And if I were to look at the properties of the input, I will see that right now it is coming in at 1920, 1080. If I were to go to the Apple computer, sure enough, I am also receiving 1920, 1080. So, as always with custom formats in Barco, I'm going to go to the custom format tab on the right hand side and I'm going to add a custom format. Now you can call it whatever you want. Custom format one, Fred, Bill. I recommend though that you organize your life and I'm gonna call it as if it were a standard resolution. I will do 5240 by 1000p at 59.94. Now, of course, it'd be really cool if that was the only magical step we had to do, but as we already know, we have to configure this custom format. So I am going to go to the properties tab of the custom format. I will go to the VESA calculator and I will type in 5240 by 1000 by 5994. Personally, Kevin's a fan of reduced blanking version two. That said, reduced blanking version one is probably fine. So. I hit calculate, I hit apply, and I can see that, yes, this will indeed work on a DisplayPort 1.2 connector. Yay. Now, if you've played with custom formats before, you've watched some of the other videos, you know that the next step is rather straightforward. I go to the input connector. I then scroll down to the EDID file or the EDID and I find my custom format. However, we're gonna notice it does not exist here. Oh no, why does this mean it's broken? No, EDID as a protocol has a max of 4,095 pixels wide, or at least the EDID protocol we currently support. So now here's where there's a big misconception. I don't have to use the EDID protocol as it exists here to force this. I can still force this resolution down this connector. We're gonna notice under the input tab, here's all the settings that were the same as my custom format. Now this is the tedious part here. I need to go to my custom format and I need to save this information to apply it somewhere else. I'm gonna use the snipping tool just to really quickly create this section here. And I'm gonna keep this to the side. Now, uh, just because of my display here, I'm gonna drag this to my other monitor, but I have it here available on the other side. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my input and now I need to change these values. Oops. <laughs> I need to change these values to match what I created. Now there's gonna be one important note because we are exceeding the standard 4095, we do need to use what's called the display ID block header. This is gonna allow us to expand upon resolutions. If not, you're gonna see some funky behavior here, but We'll highlight that as we see it because I have a feeling we'll still see it anyway. So once again, I'm gonna drag this over to the right just so you can't see it, I still can. And what I am going to do now 
is I am going to change my bit depth from 10 bit to 8 bit. And I'm going to now, I'm going to turn on my display ID block. And now I'm going to type in all the values that we saw previously. 5240. Now notice right what happened right here. Horizontal active out of range, it changed it back to 1920. That's not a problem. As I change the elements of the of the sync and other uh, workflows, I'll be able to come back and change this. So it's very important that as you're doing this workflow, you go back and constantly check your work because as one piece of value changes, it could change something else. So I was to say proceed as is, then go back and clean it up. So I need to change this value back to 1029. Groovy. Uh, at this point, I think I should be set. So I'm going to hit apply changes. And we'll scroll the top and see right now 5240 1080 is what it's showing me. We'll go over to the Apple computer. We'll click on the E2. And sure enough, it is outputting 5240 by 1000 P at 5994. Hooray. Um, so this is not exclusive to Apple. You can use this on Windows machines that um, exceed what the standard EDID protocol can do. Uh, so with that, uh, the, the widescreen is your world and we hope you enjoy. As always, thank you so much.